I would like to go ahead and call this meeting to order. For those who can, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Mr. Bishop, you this much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you call roll call, please? We have Chair Joseph Dimmer. Here. Robert Bishop. Here. John Boyle. Here. Don Dianesta. Here. We have Mark Strout. Here. And we have our town manager, Thomas Hutchinson. Here. Thank you, Bridget. It's time for the public address to the board. This is a time when the public may address the board on any item listed on the meeting agenda or any issue or matter of the town. If you intend on addressing the board at this time, we ask that you do the following. Please identify yourself by name, address, or the company institution you represent. The public address to the board segment will last no longer than 30 minutes. Please make your comments concise and try not to repeat statements made by others. Please address your comments to the board chair. Discussion or debate on any issue may not take place at this time. The chair or the designee may answer questions on procedural matters. Please be cordial and respectful of others. If anyone wishes to be recognized when the board discusses an agenda item, please make the request at this time. The board chair may grant this request. Address comments to the board chair and be concise. Thank you. Is there anyone like to address the board? Mr. Filio. Dan Filio, 36 Sherbert Drive. Um, there's two or three different items on the agenda that you may have questions for me or I may want to address. Um, nine. And 17 from the line. Thank you, Dan. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, Gary Davis and Dorothy Sabian, 477 East Musicana Street. We are requesting permission to put a artistic mural on the East Street Bridge, railroad bridge. Great. Thank you for being here tonight. Looking forward to the Thanks conversation. For Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Hearing none, um, we move on with the agenda. Any suggestions on the agenda? No, I'm sorry, I skipped the minutes. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a motion on the minutes for May 10th? I make a motion we accept the minutes for May 10th. That's presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second in discussion. Hearing none, all in the favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We have a motion on the minutes for May 24th. Make a motion that we accept the minutes for May 24th, 2021, as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes passed. Mr. Dever, I ask that we take a couple items out of order. We take number 10, the appointment officer, uh, Dorothy Litz, as a permanent full time officer. Can we take that out of order first? Any objections? Hearing none, sure. Any others? Yes, and also can we take number um, 15 out of order after that? Any objections? No. Hearing none? Okay. Next on the agenda is the appointment from the police department. Chief Stroud? Yep. What are you doing? The appointment of officers. Oh, yep. So I'm going to make Officer Litz stand. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is Officer Litz. Uh, Officer Litz was with us for approximately six years, um, left for a brief stint. She's full-time trained. Um, she is sexual assault investigator certified and a bunch of other levels of certification. And we were lucky enough to take her back as a civil service reinstatement as she was already an employee here with us. So we were able to get her back within a year. And we are going to put her back in the ranks as a full-time permanent officer starting July 5th with your approval. Your motion? I make a motion that we appoint Officer Dorothy Litz as permanent full-time officer. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations and welcome. Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And number 15 on the agenda. The Department of Transfer, Police Department, Employee Fringe Benefits, and uh, any others. Mr. Arkinson, you can take that. Uh, yes. There are uh, two items on here. The first is a request to transfer $7,500 from the. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the. Uh, from the account, from an account uh, to be determined to the police department expenses uh, for the uh, extra repairs and officer physicals required uh, by the department. So moved. The motion is our second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstaining. Chief, is that all you have for this evening? All I have. Please. Okay, great. Congratulations again, Officer Litz. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Good. Yes, Mr. Officer. Uh, there is a second item under that agenda item for transfers between departments, and that is the transfer from uh, the 914 uh, group, group health insurance expense to the account 919 employee fringe benefits expense. Uh, and that would be uh, $1,000 to cover uh, physicals for new employees which were in excess of the budget. Uh, there was a higher degree of employee turnover than expected. So, motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Motion passed. And Brittany, I was an eye there. You may not have heard me, but it was kind of silent. Um, Mr. Arches, any others? Or? Uh, that's all I have. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, now moving back to the agenda for number six, the certificate, certificate of appreciation from Ms. Kappelberg. Uh, Mr. Chair, this uh, item was brought to the select board uh, by, uh, I think originally by member uh, John Boyle, who uh, spoke in, uh, in eloquent terms about the number of years and the degree of service given uh, by uh, Kathy Burke, and we have drawn up a certificate of appreciation for her. And uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Boyle would like to say a few words, but I'm sure he knows her record a lot, a lot better than I do. Well, I was expecting this, uh, Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Town Manager. But uh, yeah, I've known Kathy and the family, which, by the way, is the Gallagher family of Curtis Avenue. I think they're still there, as a matter of fact. Uh, her brother Jim was former uh, road superintendent for the town of Dalton. But she has served in an unacknowledged position for 49 years. I don't even know if Dalton had uh, elderly housing 49 years ago. But uh, if they did, she was in on the ground floor. And that would be the uh, group of housing up on the uh, lake, not the pond, by the Legion. And uh, it's still well maintained and still uh, highly sought to get in. So evidently, Kathy has done a wonderful job, along with her comrades on the uh, board of uh, trustees for the housing authority, and uh, she chose not to be come to a public setting to receive this certificate, which dismayed many of her colleagues, but it was totally un not unexpected, given her nature, to be quiet, reserved, and not want to be in the limelight and take credit for anything. So anyway, the select board takes the opportunity to applaud Kathy Burke for many, many years of dedicated service to the Dalton Housing Authority and making Dalton a much, much quieter and more quality of life place to live. Absolutely. Okay. Round of applause, Ms. Burke. Yeah. Well, 
player was, I originally Tom Kelly and brought this to my attention, and I told him what happened. He told me what happened. I said, look, the plan is the certificate's in the works. Will we all sign it up? Can take this certificate and hand it to you, and you can take it to our house sure, it's fine. or a board, a board of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right. fine with me. Uh, number seven, the appointment of the town planner. That's right. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to Grant McGregor, uh, who uh, had uh, just completed his master's degree in geography. Uh, from the university, uh, from Ohio University in Athens, after having gotten a bachelor's degree in geography uh, with a certificate in geographic information systems. That's the the um, higher level of computer mapping with with uh, much greater functionality uh, than than most people realize. And I'm I'm hoping he, he can uh, he can help turn our own. GIS system into something useful for many departments and many committees, uh, amongst all of his other duties, which will soon, I hope, uh, not overwhelm him. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, with that, I, I'll just uh, let Grant say a few words if you'd like to. Sure. Uh, I accept to join the town of Dalton. I grew up in a small town, so that feels like home to me. Uh, hopefully I won't be too overwhelmed. Uh, I'm sure I can ask all you guys for any of the help I need. You guys did very helpful. So excited for the opportunity and uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you and you will probably be a strong supporter of Dalton football, too. You that, yeah. Yeah. As a former football player. Uh, I'll reserve my comments about Ohio State for the moment. And then <laughs> I don't like Ohio State either. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a motion? I make a motion we accept the appointment of our new town planner. Second. It's a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to well. point out that I was on an interview team. They interviewed uh, Mr. McGregor, and we were very much impressed because of the pre stated uh, credentials that were available. One of the interesting things he pointed out to us that he currently by contract, because he just rented an apartment in West, is it West Hartford? West Hartford. West Hartford. So he's going to have a long and arduous commute for the next uh, six months. Yeah. And it's not bad now, but it's winter time and I-91 is tough. Yes. But we appreciate your dedication. We knew that in advance when you were uh, uh, at the interview. And we appreciate it. And we glad to have you on board. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Welcome aboard, Graham. Congratulations. 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 And number eight, the railroad underpass mural proposal. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson. Yeah, we received uh, a request for uh, painting a mural on a railroad underpass and went, went back and forth with a number of people, including our chief of police, who uh, unfortunately has, has left now. Uh, but she did not see that there were major safety problems and offered to provide traffic cones if that were useful for the project. And I understand we have the artist here uh, who might want to speak a few words about the proposed project. I'm Dorothy Sandian. Uh, I'm a local artist. Um, we would, this is my husband, Gary Davis, painting partner. We would like to uh, propose a mural for the East Street Bridge, the bridge apartment. And uh, this is kind of an area that I, I live right near it and I walk by it every day. And there's a picture that I see and I cannot understand. <laughs> so I'm very excited to ask for the opportunity to uh, put this up. Um, I have a mock-up of it, if, if you'd be interested in seeing it, would you want me to bring it up there just to show sure. it? Sure, yeah, I'd love it. And they just finished touching up the uh, other bridge on the other end, the Hinsdale, oh, and the Hinsdale, Dorothy was part of that project. Too. Right, the, uh, the Hinsdale Bridge, which actually gave me a good feel for the, the surface that we'd be painting on, so I, I have a good idea of what kind of paints I will need and everything else. We're proposing oh, wow. that outsized beehive with four foot long bees and a very, very realistic 
honeycomb in the wall. So um, I cut my teeth in Sarasota at the um, oh, wow. Sarasota Street Painting Festivals. And uh, cool. I'm used to working very large and in high traffic places. Mm -hmm. and, you think um, John can get a copy of the Do you keep filming yes. that, John? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should I bring it up to you? <laughs> <laughs> you get a good question. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So, yeah, and if you have any questions, uh, Gary, I will be happy to answer I've anything. seen your artwork at the stationery where I work. Oh, okay. I get greeted every time I walk in. I see your big ocean Great. scenery there. It's just awesome. That was a fun piece. The big bear upstairs and the giraffe yes. is just out of this world. So right. I, I'm going to see that. Work. Work. And then the other one at the CRA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, at the CRA yeah. pool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Any questions? We're open to questions. Is there any concerns? We're just you're just waiting on permission from the uh, railroad. I have contacted. CSX Railroad twice and still have not had a reply, so I can continue to try to contact. I don't think you're going to worry about that. Thank you so much. So as, as far as I know, the, the permission for the project actually rests with the railroad, it being railroad property, and the town is involved only insofar as, as there might be traffic issues, and our chief has volunteered to cooperate with uh, whatever the artist might need. So, Stephen, do we just need a motion of support of the project? I think that would be. And then that may help with the CA uh, with the railroad approval? That would be very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Could I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Sorry. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Well, I have a couple of quick questions. Um, have you taken the time or effort to canvas the neighborhood and see if the neighborhood supports this? Because since I've heard it about it, there's a lot of negatives towards having a mural on E Street, which is a residential street with many nice homes up there, uh, many homes, and quite nice homes. And uh, I just think that you gotta have the support of the neighborhood before we uh, plunge into this. So with that in mind, I think we should hold off any activity until we hear from the railroad. We could go up to the houses. There's five or how many? There's like five or six houses going up the hill. Yep. But we'll there's this top to them, and then there's one or two a little bit further up toward the cemetery. Yep. We would be glad to go and yep. contact all well, those people. There's several houses underneath the underpass as you go up. But there's also several houses on East of the Town Street. Now, the citizens of the town that have recently been impositioned by the railroad, CSX, deciding to put a crossing for the Appalachian Trail and blowing the horn to uh, of the trains that come through to no end. And uh, many of the neighbors feel like, really, do we need any other inconveniences in our neighborhood from the railroad? It's been my experience that um, adding a mural like this is, uh, well, number one, it's a it's a respectful of nature mural that's going to be tasteful. It's not going to be a, a garish pop figure. Yep. But, um, is there I a nice uh, bridge abutment on underpass on South Street? It would be better suited to this. I'm sorry. Have you looked at the underpass on South Street? Uh, I have not. Well, I think I also recommend that. A lot more visibility, a lot more traffic. Not that many houses near it. It's a lot more straightforward uh, underpass with plenty of face. Uh, we call it face available for uh, um, a mural. Well, I suppose that could be under consideration. I mean, I hear from the residents that, you know, we really don't want to see this done. At least you were a resident. Many of them thought you were just somebody passing through that wanted no, to do this. Yeah, and that's appreciated. Mm -hmm. that, and then they would put it on Facebook, and the artist would be gone, and forever we would be stuck with some uh, cartoon bridge like they are in Hinsdale. And where it's more of a tourist attraction. And many of them don't like to see their quiet and solitude, and solitude uh, disturbed on East Street. I, I actually wouldn't want to do it if that's the way the neighbors Yeah, but we wouldn't want to do it. Many of them do. And I haven't talked to a lot of them, but I talked to a few just to get their feelings. And, uh, there is a feeling towards that. We have a motion and a second for support of the program. Further discussion? 
Yeah, I would just uh, mention that I, I doubt that the abutters in that neighborhood uh, at this point know what was, what's being planned to be painted there. Um, give the folks an opportunity to go and have some conversations. I'm in support of it, uh, but show them what you're gonna do, you know what I mean? Uh, whereas maybe they were just a knee-jerk reaction previously thinking that there would be Mickey Mouse characters. Right. You know, Disney characters painted on the bridge. Uh, yeah, this is a little bit level above it. The other thing I would say is most of those residents probably don't have a direct line of sight of that location, although, you know, it's worth looking That's at. That's actually true. There's not a direct, not a direct line, line of sight from the property. Um, I, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, you know, we're just putting forward a vote to support it. We're not actually approving it. It would be up to uh, CSX yeah. to approve it. Um, and we, I don't wouldn't want to, we wouldn't want to do anything. If neighbors don't want it. They're not interested. We've done lots of other sites and had a lot of approval. You know, we'll see something else. I think it looks really interesting, and uh, I'm in support of it. So. Well, we'll do some more research. Some further discussion? Yeah, I'm totally supportive of it. Also, uh, it's art. It's local art. It's talent. Uh, it's inside the stationery. It's inside the CRA. Uh, if it was in my backyard, I would love it, to be honest with you, so. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? So we have a motion and a second for a letter of support from the select board. We have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Abstain? Thank you. So that will be a letter of support that could go to CSX to help with the approval of that. But we also think you heard from everybody just kind of checking with the neighbors, but it sounds like something to do anyways. But we're in support of the project. So Fair enough. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Mr. Dever, would you indulge me one more? Can you we move number 14 up? Number 14. Uh, the New Street property. Yes. Any objection? Hearing none. Number 14 is so moved up. Okay, number 14, Mr. Hutchinson. This is a discussion of the convenience of the U Street property. All right, let me just find that. Uh, there we go. Um, the uh, town meeting uh, cleared the way for the select board to enter into uh, a conveyance of that property at the town meeting on May 3rd. And so the only thing left to do is to uh, come up with a proposal uh, for the property. And um, I know there are, there are various opinions about how to move forward, and I'd just like to, to make a few observations of fact. Uh, one is the, uh, the assessment of that property is $8,100. A uh, fairly small piece of property. Uh, the people who were um, who were requesting the conveyance uh, have done a good deal of maintenance over the years, and that's that's a valuable service to the town in keeping the, the piece of property maintained. So there, um, the, I, I think it would be it would be appropriate to include that consideration uh, against the, uh, the price of the, uh, against the assessed value. They've, they've been putting their own labor into that land for, for some time. Uh, the only other thing I, I would say is that since this is a, a, you know, it's something that's benefiting them, um, it, they, they might, uh, it, it might be a good thing for the, the, the people who are who are getting the benefit of the property to pay the legal fees for that to be transferred. Did you uh, tell me if you're even talking about the recording fees and the registry of deeds? That would be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. What other legal fees are there? I mean, our, our town attorneys are preparing this. I mean, you're going to parcel out of the budget and what's been allocated to this function? Oh, yeah. Just coming out of our, our regular legal budget, but it, it would involve their their drawing up the purchase and sale agreement. Isn't that already been done? No, they they need a uh, they need a 
a price to put on it so that we can uh, actually We were operate. prepared to put a price on it before the annual town, before the town meeting, but uh, somebody uh, uh, managed to uh, delay that. And at this time, for the fourth time, I'm going to make the same motion. If this board chooses to vote against it, good. Yeah, I'm all through with this. But I've worked on this for over a year. This property is virtually worthless, except to one entity, and that's the Jordans. Mrs. Jordan sitting right there. It has no value, and that's according to two of the town's largest realtors and one realtor from out of town. It has no value except to the abundance. Now, Mr. Esco, at one of our many times this was on the agenda, brought up the point, well, what if the uh, uh, out of butter is interested in it? So, it got delayed again. And I went out and canvassed the abutters. There's two, uh, I don't know if you guys have a map or not, but there's two direct abutters. And uh, neither one of them have any interest in acquiring that property. Uh, their garages and property back right up against it, and it's kind of a drop off. They have no interest in it, and it was interesting enough is that uh, they thought that um, the Jordans had owned it all along because it's their lawn. So I, I, I don't really see a real problem here. It was supported unanimously at the annual town meeting to re, uh, convey this property for a uh, minimal fee. So at this time, I'd like to move that we convey the property on View Street to the Jordan family for $100 plus recording fees at the registry of deeds. I'll second that. There's a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Would we want to add any other fees that come up? Legal fees, not just recording fees, or is the town going to assume the cost? I think it, it, I, the, the, the work that the Jordans have put into this, removing two dead trees, at their own expense from that lot. In fact, it's even mentioned in the legal uh, back and forth between the town manager that we should consider uh, reimbursing the Jordans for removal of the two dead trees and cleaning them up that were on the town property. But they wanted to protect the children and in the neighborhood. Also, that driveway in the back of St. Agnes where young children come out of there every day, as we all know, and go down View Street. And we're getting away from a libelous position and getting this property back on the tax rolls. It's definitely a win-win. And I would suggest, Dan, that we, whatever it would, would be minimal, if there was some additional fee that we had overlooked. And what, if something like that comes up, we'll find a way to deal with it at the time. I support that. Okay, well, thank you. The reason why I was against it in the past was as a state law process we have to follow when we're removing property. And that's why I rejected the last time. I didn't think hundred dollars was a fair value. So we have the fair, we have the value at eighty one hundred. There's a couple of costs. There's a couple of things that we evaluate for the time that was spent on that property, and come up with a fair value. And this also sets precedence for all other property that's town owned within our town if they ever want to convey that land. So we need to be very cautious of what we set here as a precedent. So there's a motion and second. Discussion that motion was to convey the land for a cost of $100. Plus recording fees. Plus recording fees and registry fees. That's probably a couple hundred. Okay. There's no agreement about the, is that tree removed now? Yes. Okay, so there's no additional cost there or consideration. Well, it could be consideration in your own calculation of this $100 value. So there's a motion and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed. The motion was carried. The motion's yeah. carried to the hundred dollars for that land. Yep. Plus any legal recording fees. Correct. So we just wait for a purchase and sale. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, now that the, the attorneys will be able to insert that number into the purchase and sales agreement. They should be able to make these, this document expeditious. Am I correct in saying that? I believe so. Okay. Be in touch, Ms. Jordan. Thank you. The, all right, so where are we now? We're on number nine. 
the BRPC presentation on green infrastructure. Mr. Hutchinson. I'd like to introduce um, Courtney Morehouse from the Regional Planning Commission, Senior Planner, to talk about green infrastructure. I think we all got uh, a flyer in our mailbox or uh, in the mail recently, and I think we're going to do a little deeper dive than that now. Yes, indeed. Uh, so my name is Courtney Morehouse. I'm from Berkshire Regional Planning Commission, and we've been working for about well, we say two years when we got the grant, but let's say the last few months on a green infrastructure plan for the town of Dalton. Um, and this is mostly to look at flooding around Walker Brook, but we've taken a more expansive view of the developed areas throughout Dalton and also incorporated a lot of the emergency, personal emergency plan planning into, uh, or sorry, personal emergency preparedness into the outreach materials as well. So you all should have received something in your mailbox that announced the green infrastructure plan as well as a short flyer on how you can prepare for floods and other natural disasters. That was all part of this grant program. Um, so we, are, we have a really rough draft and we should have a full draft of that plan by June 30th um, that we hope to then have for public review. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of what that plan will include. Um, and welcome any questions and any feedback that as I write the plan, <laughs> I can incorporate it uh, live. So we looked at about 23 different properties, both within the Walker Brook watershed and outside of it, again, with a primary focus on mitigating or reducing flooding, specifically in Walker Brook, but in other areas as well, and also doing some stormwater treatment of um, roads, parking lots, et cetera, anything impervious covered throughout the town. Of those, about 12 properties, uh, town-owned properties, were actually viable, and uh, we had a con contractor um, engineering consulting firm put together very preliminary, preconceptual designs uh, that'll be included in the plan. Of those, we sort of chose three that we thought were the top picks for viability, um, whether that was because the space was a good demonstration project or because it looked like there was going to be some repair needed anyway, so maybe it'd be a good opportunity to put in some sort of green infrastructure um, structure to mitigate some of the storm water. Um, and those three were namely Craneville Elementary School, where there's a parking lot that's sort of degraded. If you're upgrading the parking lot anyway, it might be an opportunity to install something like porous pavement, um, or if that's not really amenable to the public works folks, perhaps a bioswale, um, a bioretention pond, that sort of thing. Something that catches the water and treats it. Um, Green Ridge Park down on South Street, um, again, sort of treating the parking lot runoff, uh, stormwater runoff, and as well as the street, some of the street runoff as well. And then, sort of most importantly, there's been a daylighting and bioretention or flood retention basins proposed for the senior center here, as well as the old school center. And that, again, nothing sort of binds you to these. We're really just sort of proposing different ideas that could and getting some money into some of the preliminary designs so you can take a look at what this might look like. Um, and then obviously there's gonna be more work to go into it. I know there's a current H&H &H study or hydrology, hydraulics study going into specifically Walker Brook. Um, so a lot of it would be dependent, a lot of whatever is coming out final would be dependent on that. So this is kind of just your preliminary. Um, the, the, that third project, we also, because we had some money left over in the budget, we went ahead and asked them to do a topographical survey and thought that, you know, in the future, if there is some sort of designs that happen at that site, you might want that anyway, and we could save you some costs in the future. Um, so that third design will have some more in-depth design work done. Um, in the packets that I handed out, which I think will be in the minutes as well, you have those three different designs for the sites. The last three pages are basically a step-by-step -step because that site is a little bit bigger, and that plan is a little bit bigger. So what you'll see in there is two bioretention ponds. Those will essentially catch the excess flooding. That's the main flood mitigation devices and then a stream daylighting, which will allow for the stream, which is currently buried and piped through the storm sewer system, to actually go into a natural stream channel 
which will also reduce the flooding because it'll allow a little bit of give as opposed to now where they, if it can't fit in the pipe, it basically just settles into people's basements or um, floods the, backs up through the storm sewer system. So we're trying to mitigate that through daylighting the stream. Um, and then also hopefully becoming a, a community asset, having a stream in this area, um, and then whatever happens with the old school site, having something, have that be an amenity to that. Um, so like I said, we'll have a draft plan by June 30th. We're hoping to post it to the town website for public review and for you all to look at, get some feedback, and then um, I hope to be before you again in early July for adoption or any sort of amendments to that plan. Um, we are also doing an info session online tomorrow at 6 p.m., which the flyer announced, but I'll announce it here as well, just in case anybody's interested in learning more and actually seeing some of the plans in depth. Um, and also learning a little bit more about personal emergency preparedness. That uh, webinar tomorrow at 6 p.m. The registration is on the town website on the main page, so you can register for that as late as you want. Um, and I welcome any feedback or questions. Thank you. The only, the only note I have to make is that the Craneville option, we have a central school district, so we need to make uh, sure so that. Be, yeah. yeah, so have to go through I'm that not sure too. what their plans are, but it would be great. I'll reach out to the superintendent and the Chair to see if they can watch it tomorrow. Is it most of that Dalton's? Yeah, it, oh, is, it, is that Dalton's? I think that's pretty much all Dalton's. Right? The property back? Yeah. Yeah, it's all the Dalton's. Cradle? Yep. Yeah, the Cradle? Yep. The parking lot? Yeah. I do believe so. Okay. okay. Even the, what's your name? Don't even donate a piece to us up there, but? Yes. So it's not, so not a school issue then? Yeah. Good. Okay. Good cool. chat. Even better? Yeah, I know. It's easier. What's the last communication? Off? Daylighted once before. I mean, originally it was daylighted, correct? Yeah, originally it was daylighted. I'm not sure exactly when it got buried, but what I know is that it's essentially buried at High Street, and then I think there's probably two storms, it seems like anyway, from what the survey says, there's two storm sewer systems running along the streets on either abutting, so Field Street Extension and... First, first Street. Thank you, yeah. yeah. And so then it, it essentially is buried all the way to the East Branch Housatonic, and it comes out, um, and if anybody's been down to the apartments, I believe, down there, you can see massive erosion. So you, oh, yeah. you know there's a lot of velocity happening, so the idea is not just to alleviate flooding in this area, but also reduce a lot of the velocity at the outlet where the stream actually comes, you know, daylights into East East Branch. No. Courtney, have you met Grant? Grant, have you met Courtney? I think it'd be good friends in this. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Dan, you want to make a comment on this? Yes, sir. Yep. Um, Dan Fleur, I'm the emergency manager at Dalton. Okay. Um, Hi. Uh, we have worked with BRPC on this project from the get go. Um, uh, we worked directly with Melissa Preventure. She is a uh, coordinator for BRPC with our discussions with MEMA and FEMA about the grant we have for doing Walker Brook. Um, so there has been extensive study. They've been great people to work with. Uh, this came out about uh, right after we completed our MVP plan, which was done with the RPC. Um, uh, it's really a good program. We've talked up many different issues. Um, their ideas are going to be useful for the community in our project that we're working on for Walker Brook uh, to show that we've done uh, basically what they call mapping and stuff for the project and also will be used later on when we have to go and get a grant to do the actual work. Uh, everything that she's talked about are things that we've discussed, and uh, I would recommend highly that the select board support this project. Uh, it's going to be very helpful for the community. The part that you're going to daylight, uh, is it going to affect any underground wires or anything for the senior center? What's it going to do to the property through here? Is it going to split it so we can't use it? Yeah, I think there, I mean, there obviously have to be more studies for that. Right now, we're just, I think we're looking at, you know, where is the least impactful where, place we can put a sort of natural stream channel and also, you know, mitigate the flooding. The other opportunity to mitigate flooding that we looked at was using the property just north of High Street that the town owns, but in conversations with uh, Mr. Hutchinson, it, it seemed like that was a, a sacred space a little bit that it's used by a lot of folks. Um, that woods is particularly, you know, uh, um, important, and so we sort of steered clear to that and thought, okay, well, if we, you know, depending on what is found in further studies, Ken, is there a way we can put the channel there? But yeah, that would be something we would want to consider. Would that fence have to be? I mean, at least. 
these streams are going to attract kids like mosquitoes. <laughs> so would we have to put up a fence or something to keep them? No, not, what not, liability does the town have when we do that? I'm yes. totally in favor. Of yeah, sure. Election. I'm an environmentalist. I'm yeah. a conservation Christian. I'm totally in favor of this. But we got to think of safety and litigation for the town, too. For sure. Yeah. I don't know that the stream would be, I mean, one, I don't know that it would be that deep, but in the same way that we treat any other sort of streams on public property, it would it would be handled in much the same way. So Walker Brook is actually daylight, day, day lit, daylighted, uh, north of High Street, and so you would treat it much the same as it is in that location. Yeah. I mean, I would assume, but if there's other regulations, then that would, you know, that would have to be taken into account. That's it. Yes. Uh, on this possible proposal to daylight Walker Brook down to the uh, River Run or the post office where it goes underneath through nine, if it was daylight, it would you or the parties that be have to rip wrap it? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, I think that that would be part of the plan is to add at least some sort of rock rock vein structure yeah. to slow the flow. It would then get, it wouldn't be completely daylighted. So you'll see in the plans that it then gets buried at Route 8. So again, it'll sort of be, it'll come out of the culvert uh, going underneath High Street, would yep. be daylit through this area, and right. then it would go back down under it. And you would want to, uh, and so you'd be essentially sort of removing, you know. Well, specifically, I mean, it goes down First Street right out here. Yeah. yeah we all know that. And then it goes over to the, back property line of the houses like Glendon Avenue. Okay. And takes a turn to the south. So it goes through many backyards. Interesting, yeah. I, I, one, I don't think anybody knows that there's an easement to do anything there. So it would have to be brought, Dan might know. There is an easement. You do have a right away. Right away? Uh, in the property, it goes off Glendon Avenue and the right away all the way from there to where the exit is uh, next to the road. Right. Yes, but the end of my question is, would this, uh, Daylighting and rip wrapping extend to the park that's behind that line of houses on Glennon Avenue when it turns south? No, not in the current plan. The current plan just has it through this this area here. Does it cross what's this street out here? Glennon. It doesn't cross Glennon. It stops at Glennon. It stops at Glennon, yeah. It goes in an uh, underground cold. It goes again into an underground. So the idea would be you'd have some flood mitigation, but you you're not doing the full, you know, you're not daylighting okay. fully, but yeah. Will that pipe be upgraded going from under Glenn and Avenue? I mean, that's up to you. No, yeah, I think, I think you'd have to definitely look, like, look at that. And I think the H&H uh, &H study that I mentioned, they will give much more in detail as to what exactly the new hydraulics or hydrology you would need in order to accommodate something like that or, or an alternative plan, you know? Yeah. There was a study done in 19, I do believe it's an older one, 67, of all this drainage system and when this stuff started first uh, flooding here, and it's just like a major apartment house. That you got big pipes going into little pipes, and yeah. and so it's just like everybody in an apartment house turning on all their faucets at once, and it's going to back up to the low spot, which has always been the junior high. Yeah. So, What's, uh, what is it when it comes meanders down on the ground, turns down the that back at Glen Avenue, and goes underneath by the post office, comes out that comes out on River Run. What's the diameter of the pipe? I'm not sure. I think that's, that's a, a good question, though. Do you know the diameter? Yeah. It's a four-foot pipe. Part of the problem with what they're dealing with and what's been discovered was that not only the, the drainage from the Walker Brook and also from the Upper First Street, yeah. but there's also a major drainage pipe that comes down off Pleasant Street uh, around Daly Avenue and it goes into the same culvert. Really? Uh, the retention yeah. uh, pond over here which mitigates, uh, which doesn't mitigate, it creates part of the uh, problem with the flooding uh, that we've experienced here because you have uh, three major drainage yep. things going into one yep. container, mm -hmm. and from there a four-foot pipe. And the pipes coming through here and the ones coming down um, off of Pleasant Street are a diameter larger than the pipe going out. Mm -hmm. So it, it has to be a problem. And as, as was stated, the, the hydraulic and the H H plan should give us a better idea of exactly what we could do. And the thought process so far is that it's going to be a combination of two things. It may be replacing the pipes plus daylighting. Um, but that, the study, getting that study done is going to be critical for what's being done. 
And as I said, the work that's being done by PR, PRPC on this has been a very, a very important, very uh, critical to what we've been going forward and doing. So, is that all this grant? <laughs> Dan, okay. Storm drain. I didn't, I didn't know this. Comes down Pleasant Street. Correct. I can see that happen. And then it must cut through somebody's property. It actually cuts right at the, uh, uh, you know where the Brennan's property is. Yep. The oh, a couple of houses from the bar. Yeah, it actually goes in there and then it cuts over. It cuts over and joins up here? Joins the same catch basin that catches all the water and drains from here over in the middle of the field off, off of Glen Avenue. Looks like a disaster waiting to happen someday. Yeah, it was a disaster for many years. Bob said that in 67, the first known flood of this area uh, of the school actually happened in 1935. Yeah. Then there was two in, in the 1950s, and then we had the major one in 1980, in which we had photographs of the janitors getting to the school in some rowboats. Yeah. There's actually a picture floating around, and we haven't been able to get it, of janitors in the building using the rowboats because it was the only way to negotiate more parts of it. Of the property. 1980 was, or 1980, 1981 was the last time they did any work on the, the culverts, um, the, the water uh, system, and it just it, it continued to be a failure. So essentially, the school basement and the school in proper was a retention basement. <laughs> 50,000 gallons of water. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that doesn't exist anymore. Correct. So that's, that storage capacity, we've lost that. But it's, it's something that I can say from the emergency management department view, and I used to work with Becky Slick, the uh, old town planner, about it, was a major concern about um, what's going to happen the next time we have a major storm come through. We're going to learn exactly what the, uh, how much the uh, losing the building is going to affect the neighborhood. Um, prior to uh, a certain point, uh, the people, especially the people over here on uh, Field Street Extension, the people over here on High Street, um, uh, I can't think of the last name, the, the Franklins, the house that was here, uh, they had flooding all the time because of Walker Brook. Um, then the work was done and uh, it was mitigated to some extent, uh, but we do need to address it. Uh, since the senior center has been here, we've had two situations in which basically this was an island in the middle of a flood. Um, and we're very fortunate that this uh, wonderful building has not been affected in any way, shape, or form. Okay. But uh, there's a lot of work going on from it. And as I said, PRPC has been very, very helpful and very, very helpful what we're doing. And yeah. very helpful. That's excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do we just need a motion for support to continue the work, or just kind of uh, this was an update? And, this is just really kind of an update, and also just a precursor. Look, look for this plan, and we're hoping for some a town adoption in early July, whatever that meeting looks like. And um, uh, also, it's just a plug that we're happy to help with any other grants around this or planning support that we can. And there's a full webinar tomorrow night at six o'clock. Full and webinar tomorrow. on the town website. Exactly. To okay. Yep. So we'll right, keep great. keep everybody updated. Thank you. On, on that point, is it going to be recorded in case you can't watch it tomorrow? Great question. Yeah, I think we're going to try to record it and okay. then um, also provide the slides up on okay. the website as well. So, yeah. And when that's done, I've already talked to, to Melissa about it and Allison. Um, they're going to provide me some of that and I'm posting it on the emergency management site with the connection to uh, Mark's site, site on uh, Facebook so that's that great. it will be uh, available for more people in the public to see it. That's, that's yeah. excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Or okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Uh, moving to number ten, the let's see, we did the appointments. Uh, the tech number, Mr. Arkinson. Uh, <coughs> yes. The um, another function of the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission is to. Uh, it has the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization, which makes the decisions around uh, what transportation projects are going to be prioritized. As part of that, there's a technical advisory committee, which takes up um, the, uh, the ad advisory role uh, in, in that process. And for uh, quite some time, Dan Filio has been our our TAC member, TAC member, uh, and he has uh, unfortunately decided to 
draw back from the dozen or two dozen projects he has going with the town there. And uh, I would, uh, I am going to therefore recommend uh, someone else uh, to take his place. I think um, it would be a great thing for there to be select board representation. And I know that um, uh, your chair, Joe Miller, has uh, been doing a lot of reaching out into the community and, and, and getting involved in things, and I am recommending that uh, Joe Diver be the new technical advisory committee member uh, for the town of Dalton. Second. <laughs> that wasn't too close. <laughs> Motion So moved. So moved. Now second. <laughs> motion is second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll abstain. But I guess I'll accept. Thank you, John. Mr. Yes. If I may. Yep. Uh, basically, it consists of four or five meetings a year in the early part of the year, January through June. Um, in which they discuss the tip, tip plan and Dalton's role in that, uh, who we are, and also votes on different things that go into the tip plan for the community. I'll see that you get the paperwork uh, involved in it uh, that's being done. And, uh, I'll make sure that the Cleve Coos from the RPC is, who runs the committee will get all your information and contact. Great, great. Thank you, Mr. Philly. I'll connect with the handoff of all the knowledge that you have. <laughs> and uh, thank you for all your service on that committee and all the others that you're working on. Thank you. Uh, BRPC alternate? Mr. Uh Yes, thank you. Um, the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission has a main seat in its count in its council, its uh, uh, public body, and that is a position that's appointed by the planning board. The select board appoints the alternate position for that, and uh, for some time that position has been filled by your fellow member John Boyle. And I'm pleased to recommend John Boyle for another term on that on that uh, body. For a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint John Boyle to the BRPC alternate. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Ministry of Assistant. It gives me, once again, great pleasure to recommend. Uh, someone for a uh, staff position with the town of Dalton, uh, Wilson Machino, uh, has a, a great administrative record, and uh, I believe she is the right person to be sitting in the chair now occupied by Judy Wagner, who's going to be retiring at the end of this month. So uh, Alyssa's here uh, to say hello to you, and uh, hello, so we can welcome her. Care to say a word or two? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to working for the Tower of Dolphin. Um, I've lived in Pittston all of my life. Uh, so it's a little different listening to this versus listening to the city of Pittston. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Great. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Is there a motion to accept the so. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. When Welcome to the board. When's she going to start? Uh, in two weeks, as I, uh, yeah. as I believe it. Good. So she'll get some cross training from Judy. Anything we do to help you? Certainly just say the word. So. Thank you. Okay. Uh, FY22 appointments, Mr. Hutchinson. You'll find in your packets a, a long list that at, at the very top, um, it says FY2020, but below that it says FY2022 appointments. Uh, if you can uh, read that and mail it back as soon as possible. Uh, there are a few changes from this going over it. Uh, I am unfortunately not yet prepared to offer 
recommendations to the Green Dalton Committee. I will note, uh, as I just mentioned, the Regional Planning Commission delegate is a position filled by the Planning Board. And uh, I believe those are, oh, oh and uh, I believe that, that Brian Duval is now our sealer of weights and measures, so I'm not, I'm actually not entirely clear on that myself. Maybe someone knows the history of that better than I do. It's our building inspector this. Yeah, we, yeah. we appointed them. Last year. Last yeah. year. Yeah. Okay. So with those changes, um, I would, I would move the slate. It, I think it's it's far too long to to go into every name. There's there's about a hundred. So names. that's what we do. I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's, that's what we do. We just um, okay. yeah. yeah. There's one other one other change. I know there's an employee that is going to come in, but is leaving us July first. Uh, Judy Wagner is leaving July first. Um, uh, we have a, uh, a highway superintendent who's leaving July 17th. Oh, okay. All right. I have my so I, I think we may have other appointments, uh, related appointments, uh, on July 12th. Okay. Come forward. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes, may I suggest that so we vote to adapt this in total, that we exclude uh, the Green Committee because, it, for one, it lists uh, Rose, Diver, uh, Mazzani, and Gitlitz as members. And they resigned from the Green Committee. So yeah, Mr. Sergeant Jim said he's not, yeah, he's not including that. And uh, Mr. Uh, I just indicated he's looking for new candidates. So uh, I, I would support approving uh, the submission in total with the exception of the Green Committee. I'll make that motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? And, and, and uh, with the other few changes that I yeah. mentioned. Mr. Esco. So why would we not approve the appointment of Wendy Brown and Richard Hall who are on this list? I would be in favor of that because we are going to be talk to them and I'll be rising the very soon. Okay. I mean, I, I'm good with that. Why don't we do that separate? Okay. Can we go in total and have any Richard? Sounds good. Joe Fish and... Uh, with Wendy? Wendy. Wendy Brown. So there's a motion A for the discussion. On approving the slate of appointments, minus the Green Committee as listed, and minus the additional corrections and stuff. Just point out one more correction. My name is listed as the BRPC delegate for the planning board, and I do not believe that's correct. Right, and and uh, again, as I mentioned before, the, the the select board actually does not appoint that position, so that, that should be removed from this. Okay, okay there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passed. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I move that we appoint Richard Hall, Joseph, Joseph Fish, and Amy uh, Brown to be members of the Green Committee. Would that be Wendy Brown? Wendy. Wendy, what did I say? Amy. Yeah. Yeah, Wendy Brown. Thank, Thank you. you. Joe second. Fish. Motion and second. Any discussion? Joe Fish is, uh, is being nominated on this list. He's uh, he's he should be. He's a German. Yeah. Or, I mean, uh, he is on the Yeah, he's here. He's on my list. Oh, this. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have that one. Yeah, you're a Page two. <laughs> so, yeah. Ms. Brown, Mr. Fish, and Mr. Hall? Yep. Yeah. I don't have that list. Anymore. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't in my bed. Good. You got to yeah. yeah. And we are going to be meeting with them soon, and hopefully we'll be getting some other members and giving them the direction of where they want to, where they can use their expertise to help us out. I mean, it wasn't for Richard. He did a great job on the lighting and stuff like that. And I mean, we need that. We need some interaction with the Green Committee. Any further discussion? 
Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? And thank you, Mr. Hall. We continue to serve on that. Mm. That's great. And then Mr. Fish, if you're watching, and Ms. Ms. Brown. Let's see. Health agent update, number 11. Uh, yes, I'm sorry that uh, Jane can't be here tonight. Um, I, however, was in a recent email communication with her and uh, got her main points. Uh, there were a couple of things. First, we'll see the, the buy recycle uh, policy there. And this is a little bit more stringent than the past ones. They're asking for more and they're giving a little bit more, so that's good. Uh, this, uh, this especially emphasizes that it's not just paper that's recycled. There, there are many recycled products and that we should be considering those whenever we buy, um, especially outdoor fixtures and furnishings, uh, recycling and trash containers, um, uh, reusable, remanufactured toner cartridges and inkjet cartridges, things like that, uh, that we uh, request our contractors and consultants to use and specify recycled products. Uh, it also contains an energy efficiency uh, 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 policy, and and I, I'll stress that this 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 does say to the maximum extent practical, practicable. So it, it is a realistic policy. It realizes you, you, you can't get everything. Uh, sometimes, and and it, and it does say um, that they have to be available at reasonable prices and terms. So we're not we're not binding ourselves to to necessarily spending more money than we can afford here, it's, uh, we do look at things on a case-by-case -case basis, and that will, that, that will be, uh, again, to the maximum extent practicable. And, and, and we're, allowed, we're allowed some interpretation as far as that goes. So this is, this is a little bit boosted from what we've had before, uh, but uh, it's recommended by the uh, health agent, and I agree with that. So I'm bringing uh, this to you uh, for your uh, adoption as a town of Dalton policy this evening. Is, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Uh, any discussion? Um, Mr. Chairman, just that part of the discussion, but regarding recycling, uh, as your dele a designated member of the recycling committee, uh, there's been much consternation on the committee and the haulers and so forth and so on regarding where they will be able to dump their or get rid of their um, recyclable. Uh, the committee and Ms. Smith are currently working out these details and expect to have them available soon. But just one thing I'd like to point out is good news. I'm being told by Jane, by phone conversation the other day, that the uh, price, or whatever you want to call it, the reverse price of plastics at the uh, recycling center in Springfield has uh, gone down to where they are actually paying a small amount for people to bring their recyclables, or haulers to bring their recyclables to the MRF center in Springfield. And that's very encouraging as far as the, the cost goes, what the uh, recyclables of bottle plastics is done. Uh, and you did. So, it's a bright spot. Yeah, it's great news. Jane had that part, been in her update, and I think she'll come back with more detail as that gets worked out, but you're absolutely yeah, spot on. And then there is one more uh, update that she wanted to give, which is uh, not quite so pleasant, and that is that. Uh, the Department of Environmental Protection has not extended the recycling grant for another round. It had already been extended multiple times um, because, you know, we, we, we wanted to help haulers deal with uh, labor shortages and other issues. Um, so we will not have the grant going forward, but uh, they do intend to go forward with providing haulers a place to tip recycling and also to continue their education program. Actually, if I may add to that, uh, Mr. Town Manager, Jane also said that, yes, the grant, the grant will be terminated, 
but that may be actually good news because with the grant comes many restrictive provisions regarding recycling in the hollows. So now it's another uh, a little more latitude towards coming to a resolution of the recycling situation. And there may be other grants available. Yes. Yes. Well. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to just back up for a moment, just that we had a motion in a second, we have a discussion on the policy, and then want to refocus yeah. on the policy. And I did have a question, um, Ms. Hutchinson, is, is that the memo on this is from is, is from um, our prior town manager of May 2020. Is this just a, is this policy already in, in effect from back then? Or was this not ever implemented back in 2020? It should have been implemented in 2020. Uh, I'm not sure that this is the, I believe that the memo it, it has been attached to the new recycled product procurement. Okay, policy. thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll note the recycled product procurement policy that's been in effect since 1998 is at the back. Is at the back, yeah. So this draft, I mean, I, I think it's a great uh, improvement from the current policy, and I don't see any issues with moving forward with this. I think the benefits uh, will be uh, great to the town. Any further discussion? Just have one, uh, just to start to send just part one in section C, it just has a, um, a space that needs to be filled in. I'm not sure if that's for contract. The town department shall ensure that all contracts for printing include the following language printed on blank percent post consumer recyclable contracts. I don't know that. Uh, yeah, that is probably supposed to be filled in, and I will look through the recommendation on that number. Okay. Um, Okay, so motion and second, discussion, and further discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, and then motion passes. I would like to, if I may, if there's no objection, move back to the appointments because I failed to mention the KP Law appointment memo that's in our packet. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. And um, so I just want to bring the board back to those appointments. Any objection? Uh, Mr. Action, would you like to make the recommendation, or should I, as it's written to me, I don't know. Uh, sure, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to recommend reappointing KP Law PC as town council. Uh, they're an extraordinary group that provides very finely tuned advice to municipalities across Massachusetts and are at the very forefront of municipal law. And they have a reasonable cost. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, and now I'd like to move to open as a licensing board. Expansion of liquor license outdoor serving. Can we hear back from uh, the VFW and the, what Jane brought to us at the last meeting. So uh, the open question about yeah. the extension. Uh, if I may say, Mr. Chair, I think the whole issue has been resolved. It was just a misunderstanding that between the VFW and Legion do not purport to be restaurants. They're not in the restaurant business. So they have no reason to have outside service because they don't serve meals outside. But what they do have is uh, pavilions where they host uh, uh, parties uh, and other groups uh, on a rental basis. And when they do that, the uh, rental, the rentee is required to get a one-day uh, beer, wine, or liquor license from the town manager and uh, state all the necessary uh, information pertaining to that event, such as time, whether there's going to be entertainment, uh, length of the event, and so forth and so on. Uh, Todd, you already had some experience with this because the BFW had a big party the other day then, Saturday. Yes, and um, I am 
still wondering whether or not they should apply for an expansion of premises. Yeah. Well, if I can be frank, there's a lot of uh, difference of opinion within the post, the members, if they want to do that. And they're trying to resolve that. And, and when they resolve that issue, then they will come forward and get an application and bring it forward. Thank you. Some some people down there don't like change, so when I continue the old way, and uh, the people say you get any, I personally feel an extension of premises outside would uh, be very beneficial. But well, we have no formal request either way. No, from no. The, uh, no. So any other issues under the licensing board? I don't have any. Yeah. Yeah. Motion closes licensing board. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 13, contract amendments. Uh, I, there is a set of contract amendments uh, on the table there. These are what was discussed before that the board agreed to. This is just an opportunity for everyone to sign the formal contract amendments, which have been reviewed and approved by town council. There are two copies of each of the contract amendments, one for the town and one for the union or association. It's a simple change that uh, adds Juneteenth to the list of holidays in their current contracts. Anybody need to get a motion on contract amendments and then is there a motion to accept? So oh. is there a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. As we're moving that through signature, would you like to move to number 16? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the approval of. Uh, one week additional vacation payout. I actually have uh, two um, requests that came in. One is for one week, uh, one additional week for the highway superintendent, and one is for uh, 27 hours for the, for the uh, director of the Dollar Communications Center. Uh, again, uh, there were few chances for people to take vacations uh, the way that people normally take vacations over the last year, and a lot of vacation time is built up. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, accept the FEMA COVID grant funds of $9,860. And Mr. Pilla, you want to speak on this issue as well? Uh, just to point out to the uh, board that this is a grant that has to do with the, uh, the obviously the FEMA COVID program. This is something Sandy Albano uh, and I worked on at length um, last uh, September and October. Um, that we were able to, once we got through all the red tape of what FEMA would and would not accept, um, we were able to apply for a grant for $9,860, which we uh, did approve the entire amount. Mm -hmm. We got that for, as I said, we, we did it in October. We got the money about uh, three weeks ago. Yes. Okay. Um, so it's uh, a very arduous process, uh, but I was very glad to see that they, they came through for the money. Um, most of it had to do with active exposures, uh, buying. Uh, equipment for the police department, uh, police department and also for work done by Jane Smith uh, to promote what was being done to uh, stop the spread of COVID within the community. Great. Thank you, Mr. Pilio. Mr. Rochester, any additional comments? Uh, no, that says it all. Okay. Is there a motion? I move we accept the 9,860 grant through FEMA. For a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions here and now. Motion carries. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah.
and number 18, Tom Mandra, update. Thank you. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've seen a subtle but real change in town offices as employees and the public are no longer required to wear facial coverings to rate relief to all. Coverings for those who are not vaccinated are strongly encouraged, but there is no general requirement to wear a mask. Uh, this is a very welcome relief to many, though I will mention that there are those who are still not vaccinated for their own reasons, so please do not be surprised to see masks still being worn. As you saw from previous agenda items, I've been busy interviewing candidates for town planner and administrative assistant, and I'm pleased with the results. I hope to start interviewing for highway superintendent next week, with an eye toward an appointment for your ratification July 12th. The foreman is ready to take the position of interim highway superintendent, and I will have that ready for you July 12th as well. I spoke with the principal assessor about Rivers Street. There had been a question of its status. In 1960, the town declined to accept it as a public road. In 1983, the property was sold to River Run Associates with the deed referring to a 1952 plan showing the road very clearly as a private way. And I intend to write a letter with this, with these facts and offer them the chance to rebut them, but say until you can show us something different, you're responsible for the entire length of the road. All right. <clears throat> Question about that. You say River Street. River Street's kind of weird. As it goes south for about three or four or five, six hundred feet, that's the part I think the associates bought. The associates that own the uh, elderly holiday. But then it takes goes down and it takes a turn to the east. Yeah, east. And there's three houses on that, three or four. Now, is that the part that's a private way or? part of the streets a private way or the whole thing? Um, we believe the whole thing is a private way. Um, the, the part that's actually labeled is, is the part coming off of Main Street. Right. Um, I don't think the other part is on the, the, um, the plan that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it, it may be, it's not labeled as River Street Extension, um, but because it's the same road, uh, and it's on the plan. We we are assuming that it that it that that uh, especially because the town voted not to accept it. That was in 1960. And and yes, and uh, mm -hmm. and it had River Street Extension has not been listed as a public way. No. Then, but we continued even though we didn't accept it as a street, we continue to plow it up to this day. Which is kind of a difficult, would be a difficult argument in court. If you discontinued it, why did you continue to plow and maintain it? I, I just, I, I, I'm not sure we have actually maintained it. I think that's one of the problems. I, I know we were planning not to plow it this past winter, um, and for some reason did continue to do so. But it's in poor shape. Yes, and, it is. and we were not. Uh, Apparently happy about having the plow. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Get off a hard hidden letter to the uh, associates, whoever they are, and tell us. I, I'll, I'll look more deeply into River Street Extension. Yeah. Uh, the highway superintendent reports that the sewer line between the town main at the end of Depot Road and the old Depot restaurant has been checked by a consultant with a camera for possible breaks. We have a verbal report that the line is free of any obstructions. It was evident that there had been a break and that it had been repaired. We're, ready, we're waiting for a written confirmation of that survey. And that is not part of the town main. That's not uh, owned by the town. None of, none of that is owned by the town. Yeah, that was all put in private from the depot proper. 
down the west of Lieutenant Street, down west of Lieutenant Street, then they hooked that into the sewer on Depot Street. And it had been broken, but it also had been repaired. So that's new information for a lot of people, I think. Uh, I've been working with the building superintendent on refining his and my understanding of the processes required for project bidding and tracking under state procurement requirements, using an installation of new security cameras as a case study. We're negotiating uh, state procurement processes together. I met with Glenn Lagerwald regarding the North Mountain project, and we ended agreeing that it would help a great deal to create a new open space committee to help sort through town priorities regarding town parks and trails. This especially because uh, there are many demands being made on current town parks that seem difficult to maintain with our current resources. And the question is, what are our priorities for going forward, and, and uh, do we have a more or less of a capital plan for doing that? I was pleased to meet the members of the Dalton Redevelopment Authority and Dalton Development Industrial Commission on a Zoom call and look forward to getting them some assistance from the new town planner. <laughs> uh, the new rules for the Coronavirus Local Financial Relief Fund are out, and one provision in particular is very welcome, a revenue replacement program that assumes that without the pandemic, local revenues would have risen at an annual rate of 4.1% from fiscal year 2019. The difference between our real revenue and that 4.1% rise is available in two tranches for any general expense. For Dalton, this could mean more than half a million dollars. The town accountant and I are looking at the details, but so far, the program seems very worth applying for. It does involve a lot of calculations, and it will involve, uh, involve a certain amount of reporting as well. So that's my, uh, that's my update. Is that part, I, I, I get a little wrapped around the axle on all these different grant or different funds that are coming down. There's like 634K that's coming down. Is this part of that? Or is this separate in addition to? This is in addition to. It's in addition to. This, this, this revenue replacement program especially is, is new. Okay. So this is, um, this is not the, the ARPA we yeah, have to know one. and love. Right, right. Great. Or, 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 or if it is, it's a, it's it's a it's a fund within that that has just the rules have just come out for it. It, it, it could be within the overall act, but the, the rules are just out for this, and we just got them explained, and we have to act pretty quickly on it. But sure. uh, we have the potential. We've got a lot of money that we can use for any particular purpose until December of 2024 makes me think it might be within our book. Yeah. And just a new rule, just just new uh, a new program within that. Or, or the program is fleshed out and now now they're now they're ready to receive the yeah. applications. That's great. Any other items? Uh, and that's it. Oh, great. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Quick question. Tom, when does our new town planner start? Looks like he's already started. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, well, uh, this says that he is going to start on July 12th. Okay. So that will be the, uh, the next uh, the next select board meeting. He, he will have worked his first day. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pilly? Yeah. If I may, uh, just to that point, uh, I have the computer, we bought a computer through the CARES grant funds for the town planner um, that I have on the taking care of this technically the emergency manager's management's computer. Uh, but I'll make sure that all the arrangements for him to get that. You can catch up with that. All the information in fact we have in there. Right. Uh, and uh, I'll make sure that he gets it so that he can start looking at all the things that he's going to have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it to him all at once. That's a free word. That's a free word. Uh, future agenda items. 
Uh, I have one um, one question on the open space committee idea. Did you want to bring that for a future agenda? Just wait till you're ready to bring that forward. The idea, and then I didn't know if that conflicts with the space with the open space committee. That was that was one of the recommendations that we had made when we presented the open space committee. Okay. Before uh, that it come forward, uh, we're still waiting to hear back from the state on that. Um, I have talked to numerous people. We have about. Five or six people who are interested in being on the committee at this point in time. Okay. Um, and it is a great idea. Uh, Glenn Mike Moral, as a matter of fact, is one of the people who wants to be on the committee. Great. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, um, if, if I could just make, make a comment, uh, I'm always torn between the ideal of having uh, boards and committees all very aware of what each other are doing and all of that. And, and so, Thinking maybe there might be somebody from, from some of the, the the other environmental committees involved with with a new committee and and you know torn between that and the reality that everybody's got too many meetings anyway. If you're volunteering for one thing, um, you always get asked to to volunteer for more things, which is a little bit unfair. So um, uh, it's it's just something to think about going forward, and, and there may be uh, opportunities for more informal communication, uh, but I, I think I would lean against at this point asking for ex officio members from other committees to be on it formally, uh, but I would of course uh, try to foster as much intercommittee communication as possible because they're, they're all you know intertwined, all the environmental committees are intertwined in a lot of different ways. Yep. Yep. Great point. The one item I had for a future agenda is, and um, Grant, this is probably something that you want to get on your radar screen at some point as it, as it makes its way through, is the proposed roundabout from MassDOT. And the purpose we're asking for the agenda item, not the debate now, is really just to have a conversation about instructional listening session, session for residents. There's a lot of negative um, well, people that are opposed, there are people for, uh, it's a mass DOT jurisdiction issue, but I think the voice of the residents just need to be fairly heard uh, and then, you know, offered in uh, a way to have that conversation. So that's the purpose of asking for the agenda. Right? And are you thinking of that as an item within a select board meeting or as a standalone? Within a select board meeting just as then set up a standalone. Oh, to, to plan yeah, a standalone. Yeah, to go okay. with the, you know, have the discussion, the motions, everything else, to have a standalone listening session, if you will. But kind of like a town. Not a formal town meeting, but a town hall, just a listening session, like they did for the new schools and things like that. So. And in, in, invite DOT in to yeah, answer questions. Yeah. Or, you know, it's not the public hearing, it's kind of just a listening session. Yeah. So, and it's the option for DOT, I would think, but we can have that discussion. There's no objection for that agenda. Any other future agenda items? Yeah, for the next meeting, we make sure we know where the air conditioner is. <laughs> I was joking saying that they're going to be I got one. I got one. Mark, see you the next meeting. Where is it? Good question. Here? Well, we, we did a civic duty and had a meeting oh, here. I assume we were going back to the town hall for the next meeting, but I don't know. Be, what, did we what, what was the final decision? Yeah. We're going to go one on one. One a month. One a month. One a month. month at each place. But since we're only having one next month, it would make sense to do it at the town hall and then the one in August. Yeah. Back here. Back here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so they're playing. Um, all right. No other future agenda items? Okay. Uh, any items not anticipated 48 hours before the meeting? I have one. Remarks to the select board? Yeah, I'd like to shout out to Henry Rose for completing his conservation units one to eight as a basic conservation course, which educates the person that's on the commission from all aspects of the commission, from enforcement to how to deal with people. And everything. It's just a huge undertaking. It's a, it's a great, great thing to do. We've all taken it in the past, but it probably takes about 16 to 20 hours to complete it. And it's, it's done to MACC, and it's, it's just a good thing to have. It really keeps people up on all these. The Wetland Protection Act is changing like every almost every day. So it's just really it's a big helpful tool to have members educated on that. 
and Dr. John Berman, who's also on the commission, he's almost done with his office. So good for them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any additional remarks? I have two. One, uh, congratulations to the Wakona High School cheerleaders for winning the state championship and the game day um, cheerleading um, tournament. It was a virtual tournament about two weeks ago. And on Father's Day, they had the videos of all the, kid, all the uh, cheerleading uh, teams across the state, and they announced the awards. And we quickly went to calling our friends in the police department and fire department. On Father's Day, it's hard to get the, uh, the emergency vehicles, so it's either going to be Wednesday or Thursday. It will be a, a nice little parade going on in the street. So congratulations to those young ladies. Four years in a row uh, to win that championship. Uh, and the other is just a reminder that on the 28th, of this month is our is a special town meeting regarding capital projects and other uh, operational adjustments. So, uh, and that's at I don't have the information from seven o'clock. Sure. At Nessicus. Yes, okay. Um, and that's all I have. Any additional remarks? Hearing none. Uh, announcements. Um, new hours for the compost and brush area. Tuesday and Wednesday, two to five p.m. Friday and Saturday from eight a.m. to three p.m. A uh, message from the police department. The police department is now open to the public. The Dalton Police Department lobby is now open to the public. P please feel free to stop in and see an officer. Social distancing mask required and only two people allowed in the lobby at a time. Maybe we update that message too. Next week with the mask issue. Uh, processing the firearm permits. The firearm permits are processed between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. by appointment only. Please call 413-684-0300 to schedule your appointment. No walk-ins are being accepted at this time. A check or money order for $100 may payable to the town dollar. Renewals over the age of 70 are free. And with that, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Motion passed. Good night, Dalton.